So this slide pretty much summarizes what is expected. Now, if you ask me what is it that a business analyst does, right? so the primary objective of a business analyst, it would be to manage the requirements. Okay. As a business analyst, you have to manage the requirements. Okay. So it is your responsibility to ensure that you understand all the requirements from the business team and pass it on to the technical team so that they can and they can actually do the design and development. Okay. So in a way, you are a bridge between the business team and the technical team. Now you might be wondering why do we actually need this role? Right. So um, obviously, you know, why do you need somebody to sit between a business team and technical team and, uh, you know, pass on the messages? Why can't they directly talk? You are sitting there because the teams, both the teams cannot talk to each other. Right. So the business team is not well equipped to tell what all requirements are, are needed to be communicated to the technical team. Right. Now, consider yourself as a business uh, person from the business team, right? So you know some business functionality, but you know, you still will be wondering, you know, what all requirements do I need to tell for the person to complete the IT project? So you will not be clear on what all requirements have to be conveyed to the technical team, right? So the business team is not well equipped to tell the requirements. And similarly, the technical team also are experts in a particular technology. Right? Like they, they know Java, they know .NET, they know a particular technology, right? So, you know, they, even they are not well equipped to ask those right questions to understand the requirements, right? And that is where you, you as a business analyst come into picture, right? So you basically, you know, would be the person sitting in between the business team and then the technical team. So you have to have all that skills to understand the requirement. So you, you go talk to the business team, ask those right questions, right? So you own the requirements. So it is not the responsibility of the business team to tell you the requirements, but it is the responsibility of a business analyst to ask those right questions and ensure that all the requirements are completely captured. So if the requirement is not completely captured, you as a business analyst would be held responsible, not the business team, right? So, so people will be asking, okay, now why didn't you ask those questions? Okay. So you should have that skills to engage the business team and understand the requirements. So that's the first thing that you would uh, learn. Simultaneously, once you understand the requirement, right? You cannot just keep it on to yourself. You have to document in such a way that the technical team can understand now. Right. So it is your responsibility to ensure that everybody in the technical team also understands. It. There are some techniques, some ways in which you can document uh, those requirements. Right. So you have to be clear with those skills as well. Okay. So primarily, I would say close to 70, 80 percent of your job, this is what you're doing. You will go spend time with the business team, understand the requirements, come back and then start documenting them okay a typical day of your uh, life as a business analyst would involve these two activities okay so maybe you know a couple of hours in the morning you'll go spend time with the with the business team understand the requirements in the rest of the day you keep analyzing it and then you know documenting it and then when the next day when you meet the customer again you will you will validate it, you will you'll take his approval. So that's the way you'll go on building your requirements, right? So overall, the end deliverable coming out of this would be a business requirements document. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at two primary skills that you have to acquire to play the role of a business analyst. Now you must be wondering, you know, what is it that I have to go and then requirement illustration? Is it just like, you know, go and then uh, talk to the business team and uh, just uh, understand the requirements? Well, that's one way of it, right? So if, if you get into any project, so you should have a framework or a methodology which you can follow to ensure that you understand the requirements 100%, right? So how can you be so sure that you have understood all those requirements? 
right? So what kind of questions should be asking? What are the techniques to engage the business team? So is it always a one-on-one -on -one discussion or is it a, you know, demos or is it a work session? Is it a, you know, reverse engineering? So there are multiple techniques, right? So there are around 10, 11 techniques in which you can engage the business team to understand the requirements. So as a business scientist, you have to be aware of all the techniques because, you know, depending on the context, some of them would be a lot more effective than the rest. Okay. And then you also have to be aware of all the techniques in which you can document it. So something like a use case or a process modeling or a wire framing. Okay. So all these are various techniques. So finally, everything goes into a BRD. So you also have to understand what is the structure of a BRD. Okay. So these are the skills that are expected out of a business analyst. Right. So primarily you'll understand requirements, you document requirements. Right. So to put it in a very simple way, this is what you do as a business analyst. But to perform those simple tasks, you need to have a lot more complex skills like your ability to engage the business team, understand the requirements in multiple uh, ways and techniques and also analyze the requirements and document it in, in multiple techniques like use cases or user stories or process modeling, right? So we'll look at all of those techniques. Okay. Apart from this, you also do a few more things like do the requirements plan. Okay. So why the project manager owns the end to end uh, planning of the requirements? Okay. So he would, he would create that end to end plan. But for all requirement related activities, he will take help from you, right? So the, the more uh, experience you get, the more uh, key role you play into this, right? So in, in fact, in your initial years, maybe you know, you're not help in planning. So the estimates and all would be taken, given by some other uh, senior business analyst. And you might just be playing the role of a, a role in eliciting and documenting the requirements. But as and when you gain experience, and, and you're in a stage where you can actually estimate the understand the business and a little more and, and be in a position to plan or estimate those activities right? also start contributing into the planning activities right you also have to set up a few things like you know change management scope management risk management as part of the planning phase right so we will learn all about that when we get into the requirements planning okay so you will also ensure that, you know, you have to ensure that the requirements are communicated to all the key stakeholders into the project, right? So be it the business team or the technical team, you, you are the one who are um, actually, you know, uh, communicating with all, right? So you have to ensure that everybody is getting their information needs and then you are. So not a key uh, knowledge area, I would say, but, you know, some best practices about how to manage these communications. Okay, you would also spend your time identifying new project. So as an organization, what all projects can can we take up? Which one is financially viable, right? So which one is not? What is the scope that we should be looking at? All these activities are, are done even before you get an approval. Okay, now think about this scenario. Let's say the business team wants to take up a project but it costs like, uh, you know, $2 million. Now the business head of that unit is not going to just give away 2 million and then say, okay, no, let's, let's complete this project. Right? So you would say, okay, you know, give me a report, which tells me exactly what is the amount that I have to spend and what is the benefit I would get from it. Right? So you would want to see that before taking a decision, right? So all that would generally be called as a business case document, right? So you'll have to justify why you have to invest in that project and what are the benefits you're going to get. So let's say, you know, out of the business case, the outcome is like, okay, you know, we, we spend $2 million in the next uh, six months and post that every, every year, uh, you know, we, we cut down our cost by maybe, you know, 20%. So that translates into, let's say, one million dollars every year. Right? So you're you're getting like one million every year for the next five years, suppose. Right? So maybe you know you're getting a, a return of five million out of two million that you have invested. 
So overall, it makes sense to you know take up this project because it is profitable, right? So all these analysis would be, you know basically constitute your enterprise analysis, right? So while primarily a business analyst would not be owning all this, he would be contributing to them, right? So prime the primary owner would be the enterprise architect, and you would be working with them to to perform this, create this business case, okay? So there is a role that you play as part of your enterprise analysis also. So, so in fact, in any project, this is the first step, right? So I, I am actually going by what is it the prominent things that you do. But you know, if you if you go in a chronological order, this is the first thing that you do. You identify projects and get the budgets approved. Then you actually plan for the requirements. Then you understand and document the requirements in detail, which is a BRD. You also ensure that you communicate the requirements and ensure that everybody is, is good with the requirements. And finally, you will test them. Right? So this is the last thing which happens uh, into the project. Right? So after, after you have documented your requirements uh, into the BRD, then the technical team would do the design and development. After that, you know, there would be a testing phase of the project. Right? So the client would want to test the project. So you would coordinate with the customer, identify what all, uh, uh, ensure that you know the client tests everything, happy with the solution, and uh, you know in case he raises any defects, right? So you will analyze those defects and provide those inputs to the development team. So there is a role that you would play as part of the testing also. Okay. So broadly, as a business analyst, you need to be aware of these six knowledge areas. Okay. And who has classified this? There is an organization called IABA, okay, International Institute of Business Analysis, okay. So these are the guys who actually, you know, are the ones who offer the CBAP certification also, Certified Business Analyst Professional. We might have heard about it, or if not, maybe you know you can spend some time later in the day uh, try to search for that. See certified business analyst professional certification. Right? So that's a well-known certification for a business analyst role. But the problem is that you know you have to actually work as a business analyst for a few years before you can take up that certification. Okay, so that's how it is. Uh, so yeah, so IABA classifies the role of a business analyst into the six knowledge areas, right? And we have categorize the course into these six knowledge areas, right? So to be aligned with what uh, IIVA tells us. So from a syllabus point of view, we are, we are covering all of them. But the way we would learn would be, you know, uh, in a different way. So maybe you now I'll start off with the basic uh, uh, use case and then example, and then, you know, we'll, we'll build up on that for, for uh, learning in this course, right? But overall, we'll cover all these topics. Right, so if, if you look at it, even I have organized uh, all the topics uh, according to these uh, six chapters, right? So part two to part seven consist of all those uh, six areas. And I have added one more chapter, which is a industry overview and what is it that a business analyst does as part of this uh, projects, right? So, like I said, I'll be covering those six knowledge areas what we just covered and I uh, just explained in the in the last two slides and uh, uh, we'll, we'll go into a lot more detail and then, you know, about each of those topics and in fact, the way we would learn it is we'll, we'll actually pick up a and then, you know, we would learn it through that particular project. So, it's no theoretical classes that we're going to take, right? So we are first going to spend some time taking up a project. So maybe like something like a mobile banking app or a travel website or a hospital system, right? So the key is that I pick up projects which are easier to understand, right? So we don't want to go for complex projects because, you know, that creates a dependency on the, you know, the subject matters of the business team. So to take it away, we take up simple projects. And then we'll go through the complete cycle of how to create the BRD, how to create the test cases, or create the project plans, and, and uh, you know how to manage the changes. All that we would learn from a particular uh, example, right? So we'll pick up a requirement from from that particular project, and then you know we'll we'll apply it to that, and then learn it in that way. So that would be the the way I would be uh, carrying out the training. And the topics that we would cover is um, 
along with these six knowledge areas what we discussed I'll spend a few sessions maybe not this first two three sessions on how the industry works so you'll get a lot more clarity on you know who are the key players in a project right so who is a project sponsor who is a, who is a solution owner who is a subject matter expert and who is a project manager technical lead QA lead then you know you'll also look at who is the operations team so you know you will broadly know who are all the various players in in, uh, in the industry right when you get into an actual project who are all the various roles that you could meet potentially and what is it what is it that they do in the project right you'll, you'll get that clarity in the initial few sessions you'll also learn about the various phases of a project right so now uh, you know we are not just focusing on the requirements part but uh, you know what happens after uh, the requirements are completed right and who handles that role and what are the various ways in which the projects could be taken up right now some project would be done in waterfall some could be done in iterative some could be done in agile scrum model right so there are various ways in which you can execute a project okay so we'll broadly spend some time understanding those various uh, the project models right the SDLC models as we call it as software development life cycle SDLC okay software development life cycle we'll, we'll spend some time learning about the SDLC life cycles and uh, you know we'll also spend some time on how a project is awarded to a particular vendor right so right now consider the scenario that you know there's a client let's say Citibank okay now Citibank has a project worth let's say two million dollars so whom should it give it to should it give it to IBM Accenture Infosys which organization should which IT vendor should it give it to right so right now there will be a lot of confusion right so I mean uh, consider yourself you are you are one of those uh, key guys who has to take that decision in, in city van of whom to give this project to right so you know it's a little unclear to us at this point in time of who should be handling that project or whom should be awarded that project at what price right how should I go about it so we'll spend some time doing that as well right so we'll, we'll, we'll understand what is the process for identifying the vendor and then you know how to get the best price out of it and, and finally what is the document which comes out of it which is a contractual document the statement of work right so we learn all about this as part of the industry overview okay this creates a baseline in fact everybody in the industry should be aware of all these things so it's not specific to a business analyst role you know, but but a generic uh, industry overview that everybody should be aware of who are working in the IT industry right so that sets up the baseline once we have comfortable with how things work in the industry and who are the key players that we interact with so let's spend some more time understanding what exactly under each each of these six knowledge areas that we'll be uh, learning okay now maybe you know I'll spend some time on illustration and analysis first and then you go to the planning right because unless you understand how to document the requirements it's a little difficult to you know estimate for that activities and then you know uh, plan for that right so the way I would teach you would be a little uh, from a from an order point of view chronological order in which I will cover them would be a little different from what it is listed down here right but all these topics what I'm explaining would, would be covered throughout the course okay so as part of planning you you'll figure out you know when you get into a project right so the first things when you know the first day when you enter into a project what is it that you have to do and you have to first figure out who are the key people in the project right identify their roles and then you know the next um, few days maybe the first week you would spend time in creating the project plan and then setting up the change management scope management uh, processes and helping out the uh, project manager to uh, update this into the project charter right so you must have heard a lot of words in uh, what we talked about like project charter scope management change management project plan and all We'll get more details when we actually learn about it okay so by the end of this planning phase you will have a detailed project plan okay while the project manager creates it you will have a uh, contribution into that and then you also have a project charter so which basically covers all those uh, ways in which you are going to operate like you know 
how, if, if some change comes into the requirements, how is it that you're going to maintain the change, right? How is it that you're going to document your requirements? What are the templates? So everything would be identified as part of the planning phase. Okay, and then once the planning is completed, then you would actually start off onto your requirements, right? So you'll, you'll have to learn all those various techniques. So there are 10, 11 different techniques in which you can engage the business team to understand the requirements. And then you have to document them. Now, when it comes to documentation, there are multiple techniques again available, right? But the most important two ones which we are using uh, these days are the use cases. If you are working in the typical SDLC model, like you know waterfall prototyping or, or iterative and all this, and user stories. If you are working in a agile environment, like something like a Scrum model or Safe Agile or whatever, are the agile techniques you, you would capture the requirements in using user stories. Right. So right now we'll, we'll limit our uh, discussion to this point. So as part of the use cases and user stories, you will use a, f a lot more other techniques like process modeling, right? And, and uh, you know, wireframes, document maps. There are multiple other techniques which help you in uh, you know elaborating those requirements. Right. You also have to be aware about the data modeling, right? So how is data stored into your systems? How can I interpret that if I'm given an ER model, right? Data flow diagrams are outdated, but still I'll give you a, a brief introduction about it so that you know, you're aware of all those techniques, right? Um, so that's the various techniques in which you can document your requirements, right? So you'll also learn about communication plan, the various artifacts, modes of communication, all the best practices and all. Then we'll also spend some time learning what is it that you do as part of testing, right? So we, we would also to the system integration testing and user acceptance testing. So what is it that, uh, you know, you do as part of SIT and then UAT, right? What is your role? So do you create the test cases or do you, you know, review them? And how do you analyze the defects, right? How do you create a test plan? So we'll, we'll you know, get to a level where you can actually perform as a high level QA job as well. Right. So from a functional point of view, again, we are looking at all this from a functional testing point of view, right? So there will be other kinds of testing like performance testing, then security testing, right? Availability testing. There are a lot more uh, testing specific activities. We will not get into that. We, what we'll be, you know, focusing on is onto the functional testing. So which means we are testing the functionality of the system. Okay. So what is it that we are expected to do and, and uh, you know, what is the overall uh, process for that? We'll, we'll spend some time and learn that, okay? And we'll also spend some time on building a business case, right? So if you just have an idea or how to even identify the ideas for a particular organization, right? So in fact, they have to be aligned to their business strategy and uh, the business goals. So how do you derive from that? So we'll spend some time on, on the enterprise analysis activities as well, right? So this is the core topics into the course and along with that we will we'll do a lot of uh, other topics like you know maybe a session on video, a session on uh, SQL, a session on uh, you know multiple other topics. I, th I think you know once the uh, topics comes over I'll, I'll explain that to you guys. But uh, broadly this is how the course is structured, right? So uh, primarily, so the focus would be that you know you you gain enough knowledge to start working onto a business on this road, right? So I, there are absolutely no prerequisites. So don't assume that you have any knowledge about what a BA role is or, or uh, you're, you're completely new to this course. So that is assumption we go with. So I'll just give you a glimpse of what uh, the training material would look like. Now, uh, you know, you'll have uh, all the presentations. But then there would be a live project, let's say, a, a, travel website or a mobile banking, right? So I take up some examples like hotel management software. We can take up one that suits you, right? So we'll start off with a particular scenario in place and then, you know, we'll build upon how you'll go about as a business analyst capturing the requirements for this particular scenario. So you'll, you'll start off with, with a high level detail, something like this. Now you'll have to detail out the requirements. So how do you go about it? 
So we'll take it as a practical oriented uh, course rather than you know some theoretical uh, learning that we'll be doing. Right. So we'll pick up a high level uh, example uh, case study and then you know build upon uh, that. Right. How do you identify the use cases and how do you elaborate them? So all that would be part of the course. Okay. Um, then you also have uh, a lot of additional reading material that you can spend some time on each of those topics, right? So we'll, we'll learn about all those topics, uh, your additional reads, and another important folder is the templates, right? Now, if you if you have uh, observed throughout the course, you know whatever we are delivering is mostly a document, right? It could be an Excel or it could be a Word document. Most of the times, it's a Word document, right? Uh, but you know, at the end of it, we are expected to create only documents. So we are not actually, you know, doing any technical stuff in, into an IT project. We have to document our requirements. And where do we do it? Mostly we do it into a Word document. Okay. So the BRD or the change management or, or the, you know, the traceability, then the test cases, right, or the business case document. All these are mostly documents. So we'll, we'll spend some time on looking at each of those templates as well. I think, you know, let's take a stop over here. And when I start, we'll get into the actual um, course outline. So I'll start off with the industry overview and then uh, the business analyst role, right? So we'll learn about, you know, how a typical client organization is, how an IT vendor organization is, and then what, how are projects uh, awarded to a particular vendor, and then what is a project organization structure? How are these DLC models? Uh, what are the phases in each of these DLC models and how are they different? So we'll, we'll spend some time, nice two, three sessions to get this overview. Uh, and from there on, we'll uh, focus on to that particular case study driven topics. Okay.